What's up, LTD addicts? I've got my new pink shirt, and I'm here to talk about CurioBot. CurioBot is a chat bot that lives on your website or connects up to Facebook Messenger and engages with your customers for you. There's currently a lifetime deal running at AppSumo. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the software, try to help you understand how the chat bot works. I know these things can be very confusing for a lot of people, myself included. And by the end of the video, my goal is for you to understand the software well enough so that you could decide whether it's a good fit for your business or not. So stay tuned. I'm Dave from that LTD.life where I review software tools with lifetime offers. To follow along with my CurioBot review, you can click the link in the description. That is the referral link for this channel, which means if this review is helpful to you and you go on to make a purchase at AppSumo, it does kick us back a little bit of money here at the channel, but it never influences the results of the review. All right, let's get right into it. Here is the CurioBot sales page on AppSumo. Uh, this is the second time that CurioBot has been on AppSumo. They were on one other time, I think about seven or eight months ago. So Curio CurioBot uh, has a really interesting offer for us. Now it's very similar to the first time that it was available. So if you bought then, uh, stay tuned because there is one little uh, caveat or one little change that has happened. So basically, uh, you're looking at unlimited use of the tool. You can put as many bots on as many websites as you like, as long as you stay under 10,000 chats per month. So if you have 10 websites and each get 500 chats per month, then you're going to be just fine with a single code, right? Because that would be 5,000 chats. Now, if you you need more than that, of course, you're going to need to stack in traditional AppSumo fashion. And with each code that you buy, you'll unlock an additional 10,000 chats per month. But once you hit the magic number of five codes, then the tool becomes truly unlimited. You can use unlimited bots on unlimited websites with unlimited chats. Sounds pretty great, right? And that's kind of where AppSumo left us at the last offering. Well, CurioBot is back with more and you can stack even more codes. You might be thinking, why in the world would I need more codes if I already have unlimited use? Well, it just so happens that everything is taking place inside of a single organization. So if you're an agency or you're working with clients and you want them to have access to their chat bot, which makes sense, they might wanna see what's going on with it, then they're gonna be able to log in and see all of the other chat bots in your account. Now, to fend this off, CurioBot did create reporting so that you can easily email the results of a chat to your customer, but if you want to have even more control, if your customers need to get in there and access their own accounts, well, that's where you're gonna to need to stack additional accounts. Now, there is actually no limits here. It says unlimited stacking on all three of these sales columns. So as you go in and buy more and more codes, what you're actually gonna be getting is more organizations. So that will essentially gate off uh, other organizations or other companies, clients, from seeing other bots. I right? suppose if your company was big enough, you might even want to gate off, say, sales from marketing and they wouldn't be able to see each other. So that's how that works. Now let's get into CurioBot because I think understanding how chatbots works takes a little bit of time and uh, I'm gonna try to make it very simple for you. So here we are in the back end of CurioBot. This is called the control room. This is where we'll be building our bot together in a few moments, but let's take a quick lay of the land. So the dashboard is the screen where we're gonna see all of the bots inside of our account. Right now, I don't have any bots, so we're seeing a big fat goose egg here. Organizations, this is what we talked about in the AppSumo deal page. Organizations are like clients. They're gonna be walled off from each other and they won't be able to see each other's information. Then of course, you have your billing down here. Now, if it's six months down the road and you wanna add a new organization, organization, you know, after the AppSumo deal has expired, you'll need to add some billing. It'll be done here. Each organization has its own plan independent of uh, each other. So you could have one uh, organization that has 50,000 chats a month and another one that has 10,000 chats a month. They would be on their own separate billing plan. There's no way to kind of share resources there. All right, so let's get into it and let's start building out a chat bot. I can either create a new bot by hitting this big plus button in the middle, and that's because I don't have any chat bots on this account right now. But if you already have chat bots, you can click this button right here and they both take you to the same screen. A little bit interesting information. If the idea of building a chat bot is kind of nauseating to you, but you like the idea of having one on your website, well, CurioBot is willing to do it for you. It looks like they're kind of starting their own uh, chatbot agency, so to speak. You can click this little button to get a quote. Uh, it looks like the prices were starting off maybe around $250 or so, just to kind of give you a ballpark, and they ramped up pretty steeply after that. So let's give this bot a name. I'm gonna call it uh, that LTD Life Bot, 
and I'm gonna choose a template. Now there are several templates we can choose from. They have uh, templates with scripts, so this is gonna have copy already built in, or you can do one of their quick start templates, uh, which include basically a, a blank slate, right? It's empty, uh, as well as a simple welcome bot or a way to provide help to customers. I'm gonna choose this help to help your customers uh, template because I think that's uh, a pretty standard thing that most people install bots for. You know, to kind of help people navigate around their website. So I'll click the little check mark here and then you notice nothing happens and that's because I have to actually click the next button right here. There is a, a little tutorial telling me to do that. All right, so that's loaded up and now we see the bot screen. Now, if you're like me, this is usually where your eyes glaze over. I don't feel that any chat bot software has really hit the education part correctly yet. The, the chat bots in general are really complex beasts and if you're approaching this as a complete newbie, it's very, very easy to get overwhelmed. So let me break it down for you. I think CurioBot actually does a good job of making it simple to understand a little bit. Uh, so over here on the left, CurioBot calls these steps and they're numbered. So we have steps uh, one through 11 inside of this bot. So here's how it works. Each step is a series of engagements between the bot and the visitor to your website. I'll explain a little bit more here. So it starts off with these bot messages. The bot reaches out and says, hey, welcome to the site. How can I help you? Of course, I can click here and change this to be the words that I want, right? This is kind of a template for us to start with. If I wanted more messages, I could add another line here and I could even change it. Maybe I wanted to upload a photo or something. Uh, there's all of these options to do a video or a photo, uh, many different types of uh, messages that you could send. And I'm actually gonna get rid of this one for now. Then after the bot messages are done, well then, you know, typically the bot's asking a question, then we await an answer from the visitor of your website. Now in this case, it's a simple yes or no question, so they'll choose one of the two answers. And then after they get the answer, that'll map the question to one of the bot's responses. So if they answer yes, it's gonna go to this response, and then the bot says, all right. Uh, and then it says, what can I do for you? And you see this as the next step, right? So it maps me over to step number two. However, if they say no, then it's gonna connect them to this response right here. And that is gonna make the bot say, okay, feel free to browse around the website and I'll leave you alone. And the next step, rather than going to step number two, it's just gonna end, right? The bot's gonna, gonna stop right there. So you can see you're kind of connecting the dots in a conversation here. So let's say someone said yes, that's gonna take them over to step two right here. Now step two is a little bit different than step one, and that's because steps can have different types. They're always gonna have engagements between the bot and your, your potential lead, your customer, the person on your website. But you can see over here, this one is called a multiple choice step versus that first step we looked at was called a yes or no step. So yes or no, meaning that first question is a yes or no question. It doesn't have, you don't have to have them answer yes or no. You could say, you know, something more informal if you want, or, um, you know, kind of silly. You could do whatever you like there, uh, but it's gonna be a yes or no question. There's no way for me to add more fields here. I can't say maybe, right? It's just a yes or no uh, kind of binary question. However, in this next step, because it's multiple choice, it says, you know, re remember the flow here is the bot says, can I help you? The visitor says yes. And then the bot comes back with, well, what can I do for you? And then the answers that your potential customer could give are, I have a question. I want to see your FAQ. I want to send an email. I want to return my order. I want to directly contact the team, right? So there are five different options here, which are all going to map down to different bot responses. So here are the bot responses for, I have a question. And then it says, okay. Uh, and that moves them to step number three over here. If they say they want to see the fact, then it says okay, and it maps them to step number five. So you can see things aren't necessarily in order. We don't have to go from step one to step two to step three. Uh, the next response is I want to send an email and it says, sure, I'll send the email for you. And it starts to uh, get their information, it asks for their name and their email address. It would go through that sequence. So I hope you're kind of getting the idea here uh, that everything is 
not linear over here in the steps. You're gonna be kind of leaping around based on the engagements with the bot. And it doesn't actually have to be all that complex once you understand the flow of the different steps and what the different types of steps are. So let me choose to add a new step here and you can see all of the different varieties that there are. So we can do things like multiple choice, which we already saw, yes or no, we already saw. But you can ask uh, someone to leave a rating. They can review your customer service. You can have um, a starting sequence. You can have a legal sequence, uh, where is that one right here, which basically asks for their permission before you take their personal information to be GDPR compliant. So there's a lot of really great built-in steps to CurioBot that makes it very simple and quick to use. Uh, I really kind of starting to enjoy using a bot builder when I've always kind of dismissed them as a waste of time. All right, so that's kind of how the overall flow inside of CurioBot works. Once you've got everything mapped up, oh, before we leave, I'll show you that you don't have to look in this kind of view. They've added this nice uh, flow view here, which is kind of more similar to something you might see inside of uh, more expensive chatbot builders like ChatFuel or, or Minichat. So the way this works is I can, I can zoom in by using my scroll wheel and I'll move around and I can kind of see the flow of how people would engage with the bot. So I can see these different lines would, would kind of relate to the answers that people give. So the first question is hi and welcome. And if I scroll over this line, then I can see uh, the answer that they gave was that they wanted to exit. And if I go over this line, it says yes. And then it goes through this series of questions. Now, this line right over here would go all the way down. You can see how it connects up to that actual eventual exit, right? Um, so I don't think this is necessarily the most uh, kind of informative way to start building your bot, but it's a great way to get the overall view of, of what's going on after you've built out some of those steps. Now, let's pretend that I went through the entire bot, I made the copy just perfect, it's all ready to be deployed, it's gonna be a highly converting bot, I'm really excited about it. How do I get it up on my website, or what are, what are the next steps, what do I do with this bot? Well, you actually have three options with CurioBot. You can use one of their hosted landing pages, you can put it on your website, or you can put it on Facebook Messenger, and I'll show you how that works right now. Let's go over to this next section. So we've been on the edit your bot tab, but if we go over to bot settings, this is where we can start to connect it up. Uh, so what we're going to do is you can change the bot name here if you want. We're going to turn on remove the curio bot branding uh, so that there's no uh, notice of curio bot being the uh, provider of the bot. And then I'm actually going to hit save up here. Now, after I've saved, I can go over to the channels option right here, and then I'm going to see these two options show up. Now, if you don't save, you're not going to see these settings. So just make sure you hit that. Uh, we can basically put this on a landing page like we talked about. Here's the embed code to put it on your website. And here is the instant messenger. Now I'm going to assume that most people probably want to put their bot on their website first. And then secondary is to connect it up to Facebook Messenger. Uh, the landing page option, I don't see as much value in it personally. I don't know why you'd be driving traffic to say a, a unique page just with a chat bot on it. Uh, but I'm sure there's a use case out there where someone's killing it. So they'll prove me wrong. All right. So here, let's look at how to embed the code. You're going to get uh, this code right here, which you can copy and paste into a WordPress plugin, or you can just copy and paste this code right here and put it before the end of the body tag. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go over to uh, the website for this channel, thatltd.life, and I'm actually already in the plugin section right here, and in the WordPress repository, I've just searched for CurioBot, and you can see that for some reason, CurioBot pulls up short pixel. I don't know why it does that, but uh, let's install the CurioBot plugin, only 30 plus active installations. So it looks like most people are embedding the bots right on their websites, um, you know, using that embed code, but I'm not going to do that. I want to see how this plugin works. So let's hit activate. All right, once you've activated the plugin, you're gonna go over to settings and choose CurioBot. And here is that bot path. We just need to copy and paste it over from CurioBot. I'll copy it right here and go over and paste. And let's hit save changes. And now if I view the website, Hopefully, I'll see a curio bot somewhere. Yep, there it is, it showed up. All right, can I help you? So, it's working uh, fairly easy. Now, if I don't want it to be blue or have that um, avatar, I can, of course, change these things. I'll go to bot settings and go to design settings, and right here, I can change the theme color. Let's choose something uh, maybe more 
purplish. Uh, there we go. I could say it changed the uh, the color of the text. Maybe you want to have it, you know, kind of red text. Uh, you see it's just getting atrocious. I can't do that. Let's put it back to black. All right, so there you go. You have all of the options to, to change the colors. We can change the positioning. So maybe I want it to be on the left. I could do that. And if I hit save here and then go back and reload my page, here it is over here on the left. Now I didn't change this overall color here, but you can see that the purple is still showing up. It would just take a little bit of time to uh, go through all of those colors to get them exactly how you want it. I'll show you how to change the avatar. You can actually change the avatar as you're engaging with a customer. So maybe they say something uh, that's you know a reaction to a question that's exciting. You can maybe put a avatar of someone smiling uh, and change that person's uh, reactions as you go through. That's so kind of interesting. So that's just right here where it says avatars for your bot. You could just upload one um, and they can actually be GIFs as well. So that's really cool. We skipped over these behavior settings. This is essentially setting up how the bot is going to be engaging with your customers. By default, it uses something called a soft start. And that's basically uh, a little call to action to get someone interested in the bot, but it doesn't be too intrusive. It doesn't jump in the way until maybe someone starts to engage with it and then it opens up that sequence. So that's called a soft start. By default, it is on. Um, let's see what other options we have here. These are landing page settings. We haven't looked at landing pages yet. Uh, we've got privacy settings. We can have it uh, automatically show the uh, terms and conditions for the bot. And if we do that, we can link right up to the uh, privacy settings for your website. So if you already have a privacy policy or terms and conditions, you can just put that URL in there. That's really nice. Bots are actually pretty good at capturing useful information. Things like people's names, their email addresses, or even their phone numbers. Things you're going to want to use again later, both inside of the chat, but as well, maybe just to follow up and, and close a sale personally, maybe over the phone or via email. So how do you get that information outside of CurioBot? Well, it's through variables. Now, luckily, CurioBot is really good at creating variables when you use one of their templates. And we can study this and understand how it works, and then you can create your own variables. I promise it's not that hard. So here is an example. In in step six in our bot, it asks the uh, visitor what their name is. It saves the answer to that question as the variable name. So anytime uh, throughout the rest of the chat or even in an email after the fact, if I want to reference their name, I can just use the variable name. So I would put the two curly brackets type in name and then close it off with two more curly brackets and it'll pull up the correct name. And you can see there's a few other variables they've created here, one for request, one for email, uh, company name is another one. So let's see how we'd actually use this in practice. Well, let's go over to where it says connections and notifications. So let's say that a chat has occurred, it's all done. Then I want to get an email off to my client with a new potential lead, someone who's just engaged with the chatbot. Well, I'd create a response right here, called an, which is an email, there's other types, but what we're going to do right now is an email. And uh, then I'm gonna have this message that has their e name and then the variable name. And we've got down here email address, the variable email address. It's gonna automatically send off when the chat closes and my customer, my client, is gonna get a lead based off of the chat bot I've installed on their website. It's a beautiful thing, right? Works really well. Okay, let's get back to the places we can stick this bot. So we've already got it embedded on my website. Let's take a look at this option up here called landing page. Now by default, it gives me a curiobot.com uh, address where if I click on this, I'm gonna see my bot pop up here. Uh, and there it is over in the corner. And you can see it's got that purple color and I didn't end up entering that variable. Uh, but you know, we got our yep and our no way man. We can engage with the bot right there. So I could customize this landing page, change the background however I like, and I don't actually have to even have a website. Now, I don't think this is going to be a real popular option, but I should mention that you're not stuck with this curiobot.com domain name. If you go back over into your dashboard, in fact, we're going to go over here to where it says organization, you'll go to organization settings, and you can actually set up domains. So I've got one right here for client amp, which is my digital marketing agency. And there's one over here for that ltd.life. So I could actually, if I go back over to my chatbot, I could choose to have that landing page be on my custom domain that I set up ahead of time in this video. Setting it up is very easy. You do have to have access to your domain name settings. So if that's too technical for you, just don't worry about it. Embed it on your website. That's probably the best way to go anyway. But uh, over here, back inside of channels, if I go to landing page, I can choose the domain that I'd like it to be on. Maybe I want it to be on that ltd.life and I'll go ahead and save that. So if I were to type in that URL uh, over here, I'll make a new tab and do chatbot 
bot.ltd.life. There you go. It's the uh, same landing page. That's kind of how that works. Of course, you can have full customization over how this looks, but we're not going to get into that in this video. I think it would be uh, a little bit too long-winded. Let's take a look at how to connect the instant messenger here. So I can do add a new channel and uh, it's going to be a Facebook messenger. That's the only channel that's available right now. And let's go ahead and hit next. It's going to pop open my Facebook messages here. It's going to let me connect as Dave Swift. I can connect it up to the page that I want right here. Hit next. Uh, it's going to ask for a permission. I'll choose yes. And now I've linked up CurioBot control room to Facebook. I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now I've got a URL that's going to link me right up to the bot. So let's go ahead and just open that up in a new tab here. And it's going to ask me to get started. And we're going to see here in a second, it's going to start up the bot. And you can see it's got the same uh, typos. Everything is exactly the same as uh, I left it inside of CurioBot. So very easy to connect, uh, just a couple of clicks and we're ready to go. So there you go, there's a deep look inside of CurioBot. You can see that it's a beautiful and easy to use chatbot. It doesn't have all of the integrations in the world and you're certainly not gonna be doing e-commerce sales right inside of CurioBot. But hey, it's so easy to use that you're probably going to actually use it. And software you use is always better than stuff that sits on your shelf. So because of that, I'm gonna give it a relatively high score. We do have to pull a few points down for the lack of integrations, but this one's gonna get an 8.3 out of me. If this review has been helpful to you and you want to support the channel, go ahead and click the link in the description. When you go to make a purchase at AppSumo, it kicks us back a few bucks over here at the channel so I can make more reviews like this one. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscription button, click the notification bell so you get notified when new reviews are posted. And if you like the video, make sure you hit like so I know you appreciate the content. I'll see you in the next review. Good